everybody. I wanted to welcome you to our very first integrative learning tutorial. I want to start off by making sure that we're all on the same page in the layout of Adobe After Effects. Um, I mentioned this in lecture today, but I just want to double check. So with the After Effects interface active here on your computer, you're going to go into the window pull down menu. You're going to go to workspace and then you're going to just double check and make sure that you're on the standard layout for that workspace. If you ever accidentally close a panel, you can't quite figure out how to get it back. This is the easiest way to reset everything. So let's say, for example, we had accidentally closed one of these panels and couldn't quite figure out how to get it back. Our interface gets all strange and weird when that occurs. So now I can go back under the window pull down menu. I can choose workspace. Standard is still selected, but then I can go down to reset standard to save layout. And there you go. You're going to put everything right back where it was. So before we get too far into this, the first thing we got to do is get some assets in here to work with. So over here in the project panel, a um, couple different ways to do this. I'm going to show you guys more ways as we go along. You can choose file, import, file. That's one way. You can use the keyboard shortcut, command and the letter I. Or you can do it the way that I always do it. I'm here in the project panel. I have my cursor right here in the empty area here at the bottom and I'm just going to double click and that's going to bring up my import dialog. So what I need to do is I need to navigate to the assets that you just downloaded for this project. So we're looking for the Adobe Illustrator file called circusassets.ai. Now this is a layered file. We want to bring this in so that we can animate each individual part all by itself. So we have to do something here. It's one of the things that I showed you in lecture today. So down here, once we choose circusassets.ai, we have to come down here where it says import as, and we're going to change it from footage to composition retain layer sizes. We're not going to click anything else down here. And then we're going to click open. So there you go. So over here in our project panel, you now have two things listed here. You have a composition. It already created that for you. No need to create a new one at this point. And you also have this folder that will show you all of the individual layers from that Illustrator file. If you're ever curious about it, you can always go back and open the Illustrator file and just look at it and see how it's created, how each layer is named, etc. So at this point, all we have to do is find the composition icon right here. It looks like a little film strip with three little RGB symbols, and we're just going to double click that. So before we go any further, we do want to take just a second and make sure that our composition settings are correct for what we want to do. So if you take a look down here at my timeline, my timeline currently starts at zero and goes all the way over here to 30 seconds. Yours might be something different, but I just want to stop and take a moment to get everybody on the same page as far as that goes. So we're going to have either of these two panels selected. You are going to notice that you can select different panels just by clicking on them. When you see the blue highlight around them, you'll know they're selected. So we need to have one of these two active right here, either the actual composition or the, um, the area down here with your timeline. We're going to go up to the composition pull down menu up at the top and we're going to go to the option that says composition settings. Um, this is one you're going to use a lot to learn in that keyboard shortcut command and the letter K. Not a bad idea. So anytime you want to change your composition settings from what it currently is, you can open this dialog box here. This one was set up using a preset. It's one of the smaller HDTV presets, which is fine for a tutorial here. But the thing we got to worry about is down here and its duration. We want it to be five seconds long. We don't want it to be 29 seconds and 29 frames. So we have to change this to 05, 00. And in case you guys don't remember this, from previous classes. This is called time code. These first two numbers right here are individual frames. There are 30 frames in every second of video. The second pair of numbers is seconds. The third pair of numbers is minutes. And that final one little number hanging out there by itself on the left is hours. So now I have a composition timeline that will be set to five seconds. I'm going to click OK. And you will now see that my timeline now reads five seconds. So the first things we're going to animate are position properties, and we're going to do that for these two layers of clouds down here. I'm going to do one at a time, and I'm just going to kind of do this the way that I want. If you want to try some different stuff, don't be afraid to do that. So clouds number one, I'm going to animate position. 
I have my current time indicator sitting at zero right here. And I might want to, with my selection tool active, I can just click on the anchor point of that layer and I can kind of move it around. If I want to move it in a perfect horizontal, I can add shift to it once I select it and start moving it. So, you know, maybe I'll just scoot those over to the left a little bit more because I want to get a little bit of variation in the movement of these. So for clouds number one, I'm going to twirl that layer down. All of my strap properties are underneath the transform right there. And position is what I'm going to be working with. So if that's where I want to set my position and my current time indicator is sitting where I want that first keyframe to be, I can click the stopwatch for position. I can then grab my current time indicator and move it all the way down to the end of the timeline. And I can just grab that little section of clouds. I do want them to move in a perfect horizontal. So once I click and start moving, I'm going to hold down my shift key and that will lock it to a horizontal. And I'm just going to move it over to the right, just a bit like that. If I scrub back and forth on the timeline, you're going to see that those clouds are actually moving and doing exactly what I want them to do. So I'm going to move on to the second set of clouds, which is clouds number two. I'm going to get back to zero on the timeline and I'm going to reveal my transform properties down here so I can get down to position. I'm going to push the second set of clouds just a little bit off screen over here to the left because I want some nice parallax movement occurring. So I'm going to go ahead and click the stopwatch to set my position keyframe, move on down to the end of my timeline, and I'm going to grab the second set of clouds and just scoot them over, and like I did on the left side, I'm going to push them a little off to the right. So now we want to preview this and just see how they look. We can either use the preview panel up here, you can click the play button right there, or with just in either of these two panels selected, I can just press the space bar, and that will actually preview that movement for me. And now you should be able to see that one section of those clouds is actually moving a little bit further, which makes it look like it's actually moving faster. But it's just moving a little bit further than the other one is. So the next thing up we're going to work with is we're going to animate rotation. We're going to animate the rotation for our Ferris wheel. So one thing that is important, and that is anytime you want to rotate something or scale something, you have to make sure that your anchor point is in the correct place. Because as we rotate, that's the place that that item will rotate around. It's kind of like putting a thumbtack in a piece of paper. If you get a thumbtack right in the center of the piece of paper and you spin that piece of paper around on a bulletin board, it's going to spin. If you put that thumbtack in the top corner and you move it back and forth, it's going to be more like it's swinging, kind of like a pendulum. So our anchor point for our Ferris wheel is in the correct place to make it rotate. So that's what we're going to do. My current time indicator is sitting on zero. Got the Ferris wheel selected. I'm going to rotate down those layers until I get to rotation, and I'm going to click the stopwatch to set a rotation keyframe right there. I do want it to rotate for the whole five seconds, so I'm going to move on down to the end of the timeline. And rotation is a little bit unique in that you have two different numbers here. The first number is a full 360 degree rotation. The second number is just individual degrees. In the real world, over the course of five seconds, this Ferris wheel is not going to rotate very much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the degrees. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set about a 25 degree rotation. And again, let's preview that. Let's hit our space bar. And you're going to see the Ferris wheel is rotating in a very nice, gentle, natural way. If you want to make it go really fast and sling people off left and right, that's up to you. But we're going to make it look really nice and classy here. So the next thing we're going to work with is going to be the lights around the edge of the tent. It's kind of hard to see them unless you zoom in. You see those little lights right around the edge of the tent? We're going to make those blink on and off. So there they are. I'm going to get my current time indicator back over here to zero. I'm going to rotate the tent lights down. We're going to use the opacity property to make them blink on and off. So what I want to do is I want to have them stay on for just a bit of time initially. Then I want them to go out for a little bit of time and then I want them to come back on. So I'm at zero on my timeline. My opacity is set at 100. So my first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make them stay on for a period of time. So I'm going to click the stopwatch for opacity. I'm going to move my current time indicator over to about 15 frames. I have to create something here called a hold keyframe. It's something that we do very often 
to keep a value over a period of time that we eventually want to animate. So I have one keyframe here with my lights at 100%. I need another keyframe here that will hold my lights at 100%. I could just create another keyframe or I could come over here and I could just click this little diamond. I'm just going to click that diamond right there. And what it's going to do is it's going to duplicate the value of the previous keyframe. So I'm at 15 frames on my timeline. So I want my lights to turn off fairly quickly. So what I'm going to do is from here where I left my previous keyframe, I'm going to move over to the 20 frame mark. And I'm going to change my opacity from 100 to 0. So over the course of that couple of frames right there, my lights are going to go from being on to being off. So now I'm at 20 frames. I want them to stay off for a period of time. So I'm going to move over to the 25 frame mark. And I'm going to set a hold keyframe right there because I want them to stay off for five seconds. So now I'm going to move on over to the one second mark. I'm going to make life really easy on you at this point because we could just keep doing that all the way down the timeline, but there's an easier way. So if you guys will look down here where my keyframes are located, if I click and drag, I can drag a box right across those keyframes. On my keyboard, I'm going to press Command and the letter C. Wherever my current time indicator is sitting, that's where it's going to paste all those keyframes that I just copied. So now I can press Command V. Save myself quite a bit of time there. I can move down to the two second mark. I can press Command V again and I can just keep moving down the timeline to each whole second. Command V at three seconds. Uh, I'm going to go on down to the four second mark and press Command V one last time. So now I'm going to end up with lights that are going to actually blink on and off exactly the way that I want them to. So as you guys watch the preview, clouds are moving, Ferris wheel is rotating, and the lights in my tent are blinking on and off. Very, very nice. So we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to pretend like Pennywise the Clown is part of this circus, and we're going to animate the balloon. The balloon is over here. Sometimes things like this are a little hard to grab a hold of. Like if you try to grab a hold of the string of the balloon, that might be tough. You can always click on the solid part of it to select it, or you can always resort to just clicking on the anchor point. I'm going to position the balloon over here right at the center of my tent. And for this, I'm actually going to animate two different properties. I'm going to animate scale and position. So I might not even do this at the very beginning. Maybe I'll move over to the one second mark. And for the balloon, like I said, I'm going to animate scale and position. So I'm going to start off with the scale of my balloon, maybe down at 50% to make it a lot smaller, because I want it to look like it's floating a little bit closer to me as it floats out of the frame. So at the one second mark, I've set my scale property to 50. I'm going to click the stopwatch for scale, and I'm going to click the stopwatch for position. I'll grab my current time indicator. I'll move down to the four second mark, and I'm just going to select the balloon, and I'm going to grab it and drag it up and out of my frame, up here to the left. And maybe at this point, I'll set the scale to 150% to make it significantly bigger. So one other thing that you can do here is you take a look at this. You can see the motion path right there. It's kind of hard to see it, but there are these little handles here. The motion path works just like a Bezier curve would if you were drawing something in Illustrator. So as you drag those handles around, you can actually bend that path and make it curve in a really pleasant way. So totally up to you how much you do that. I just want you to know that it's there. So let's go ahead and preview now. So the balloon is going to start off in the tent. It's going to float up get larger and float out to the top left. This is a vector file and we are forcing it to scale a little bit larger than it technically should. So anytime you have a vector file and you want it to look perfect if you scale it larger, with that layer right there, I'm going to come over and find this icon right here that looks like a little star. And I'm going to turn that property on. That will force it to render that perfectly. So the next thing we're going to work on is going to be we want the sun to actually go down. So I'm going to come down I'm going to find the sun right here. So my sun is sitting right up here in the sky. And this is the one item that I'm going to move 
the anchor point on. I'm not going to animate the anchor point, but I'm going to move it, and then I'm going to animate the rotation property to make the sun look like it's going down. So let's say at about halfway through the timeline, which is going to be 2 seconds and 15 frames, that's where I'm going to animate that. First thing I've got to do, though, is I've got to move its anchor point. So I'm going to come up here to my toolbar. I'm going to come over and I'm going to find this tool right here. It's called Pan Behind Anchor Point Tool. I'm going to select it. I can grab the anchor point for the sun. I can just select it with this tool. I can even hold the shift key down if I wanted to move it in perfect vertical. And maybe I'll just line it up right there with that little pedestal inside the circus tent. So again, for this layer, we're going to animate its rotation property. But now that we've moved its anchor point, it's going to look like it's kind of doing a position, kind of like a transition or an arc across the sky. So I'm going to go ahead down here under the sun. I'm going to twirl it down. I'm going to get to rotation. I'm going to click my stopwatch for rotation. I'm going to let this take some time. I'm at 2.15. Maybe I'll allow that to take until about four seconds to completely go down. In my toolbar up here at the top, I'm going to go grab my rotate tool. And I can click right on the sun. And look how cool that is. It just kind of swings back and forth as if it's attached to that little anchor point down there by a string. And I'm just going to rotate it until it disappears over here behind that billboard and down there. So let's go ahead and preview and see how things are looking at this point. Clouds are moving, lights are blinking, Ferris wheels rotating, balloon floats out of the way, and the sun sets. Things are looking pretty good here. So let's do one more thing. This is a little bit advanced, but I just want you guys to know that you have a lot of cool stuff that you can do here. So wouldn't it be neat if the sky kind of changed colors as the sun was going down? So I'm going to put my current time indicator back at the 2.15 mark, right here on the timeline, 2 seconds and 15 frames. I'm going to make sure I have nothing selected here. Anytime you want to deselect, you can just click in a blank area down here, and that will deselect everything. I want to scale this window down a little bit because I want to be able to see outside that window. And I'm going to create a shape layer. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to select my rectangle tool up here in the toolbar. Notice that as soon as I do that, I now have the ability to set a fill and a stroke over here. So the first thing that I need to do, I don't want a stroke on the shape that I'm going to draw. So I'm going to click on the word stroke and this little dialog box is going to open and I'm going to choose none, just like that. And I'm going to click OK. So I just turn the stroke off. Now I want to set the color so I can click in the color chip for the fill color and I can grab the eyedropper right there and let's say for example I want to choose this nice orange color down here towards the bottom of this big kind of oval in the background so I can just click right there to sample that color I just set my fill color to that and I click OK. So now I'm going to use my shape tool, my rectangle tool here to draw a shape that is eventually going to be the background and I can animate the color of that background. So I'm going to click and drag to draw a box or a new shape layer inside my composition. Once I do that, I'm going to switch back to my selection tool. I'm going to come down and I can see my shape layer right here. Shape layer is always going to have this little star right here. I want to edit the name of that layer. So I can select it on my keyboard. I can press return and I can call it color changing background. Anytime you need to rename a layer, you can do that. Just select it, press return, edit it, press return again. So this needs to be the background. So I'm going to drag it all the way down to the bottom. I do have to click either somewhere on this little icon or in the word. I can't actually click on the solid part of the track over here and drag it down there. So now things are looking a little bit nicer. I can make this go back to fit so that I can see the whole thing. And I want to animate that color. I want it to change from that orange color to that blue color as the sun goes down. So as I twirl that layer down, I have contents and I have rectangle. I'm going to twirl down contents and then I'm going to twirl down rectangle. Then I'm going to twirl down fill. And now you can see all of the things down here that I can actually animate. I can animate its color and its opacity from right here. 
So I'm going to make sure that my current time indicator is at 215. It is. And I'm going to click the stopwatch beside that color chip right there. The sun takes until four seconds to go down, so I'm going to move over to the four second mark. And now this is the really cool thing here. I'm going to grab that eyedropper beside the fill color, and I'm going to go up and I'm just going to sample that blue color. And now that background is going to change from orange to blue over time. So let's preview our movie at this point. Pretty cool. Well, congratulations. You just wrapped up your first integrative learning for day number one.